there's a pile of bricks in there from the old smokestack that they tore down in approximately 1990. So I don't know if you or maybe the Alumni Association, someone might be interested in, uh, in uh, you know, getting those bricks from the smokestack, uh, sell them, I don't know, uh, for, for the old alumni. Uh, I'm not in a Purdue alumni, but I was here when in the 70s. Uh, I started here in the 70s as a uh, steam mechanic. And, um, and where did you work as a steam mechanic? I'm, it's called the Tunnel Gang, and I'm still in the Tunnel Gang. I've been there for 41 years. Still the same job, basically. And uh, I did come over to the old power plant. A couple of really harsh winters we had in January of 76 and 77. Um, they had trouble getting the coal out of the top bunker because it was frozen. It used to come in by rail car and snow would get in the rail cars and it would go make the trip up the elevator to the coal bunker to distribute, which I'll show you how that worked a little bit later. And uh, Joe and I had to go up on that catwalk and uh, literally take sledgehammers and beat the coal out of the chutes because it was frozen with the snow and the ice and so that the boilers could work. So, yeah. If you want, we could go uh, locate that pile of Absolutely. bricks so that you can get a... Uh, you can get an eye on them. Okay, the lights are on. Now there's no heat in the building. We shut that off a long time ago. Under normal working conditions, was it very hot? Yes. Very hot. We flagged one of the coal cars to maybe keep and incorporate in. A coal? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a yellow one down here with a P on it. Oh, here's the bricks, Lynn. Those are from the old smokestack. No kidding. My goodness. I have one like this one. And I cleaned the mortar and stuff mm -hmm. off of it. But, uh... Okay. Um. I thought the coal car was right around here somewhere. Okay. Maybe it's in the next room. Okay. There's a little, has a P on it. And those were, the bricks were from the top of the smokestack. Yes. Right? When, when the, and here's the base of the smokestack. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was, and you can see how big around it is, was. That extended all the way up. I believe at one time, it was 200 feet tall. But... They, they took a, some of it off before I got here, they say, because the bricks at the top were not, uh, they were just falling. They needed repair. Lynn, this is a, actually was used as an ash cart. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Not coal, but ash. Although there are little pieces of coal in it now that has fallen through these hopper chutes that you see right here, and again, watch your step. You notice how they go up through the ceiling? Yes. They go up to the underside of each boiler. Each boiler has one or two of these. And the guy, whoever the ash man was, he'd pull that cart back here underneath, he'd pull this lever down, and ashes from the boiler would come out until he got the cart full, which I don't know how long that took or how many chute openings he had to do, but he would pull that up through the cable. There used to be a cable on the front of the cart. He would have to winch it up because you notice the uphill grade. Right. You'd have to go through the base of the smokestack pull that cart up and it would be dumped outside and I can show you the little trap door. Again, watch your head Lynn. You can see 
see some of the, well, the track is right. underneath here. Then that cart would, he would open that hatch door there and the cart would just simply go up, had a couple of stops on each rail and it would automatically dump into the ash pit. Okay. Outside there was a huge ash pit. And once a month or so they would get the crane up here on the rail car and they would dip the ashes out into a big dump truck and haul them away somewhere. So that's the story of the ash cart. And here's another hopper from we're right underneath old boiler number one. Okay. So this had two doors. So. And where would the coal come in? Well, we'll we can go upstairs okay. and I can show you that. Okay. Actually. Do you happen to know what this piece of equipment was used for? That was a, I think they call it a steam turbine that helped with the boiler feed water. You'll notice that has an electric motor, that has an electric motor. This one was steam operated. Okay. And that would uh, take the water from this tank and feed it up when they would, basically we reuse the water for the condensate for the boilers. It would come back through when steam gives up its heat, it turns back into water or right. condensate. It would come into a uh, collection tank such as this, and this machine here uh, would pump it back up and put it into the boiler. Reuse, reuse, recycle, however you want to call that. Okay. Uh huh. Interesting. So I'll show you the coal chute to help you understand a little bit. Here was a, uh, now they're not wanting us to take it apart, but this was a coal elevator chute. If you could imagine, this had little buckets on it, about a foot deep by two feet long, and it would take coal up from Well, there's, here's the old coal bunker. Okay. But on the outside of this big door, they would dump the coal in to the coal pit, and it would take it through this hopper system, elevator system, not hopper system, but it would take it all the way up to the top floor above the boilers into a big, long coal bunker. And I, we can sh I'll show you that. Okay. Right any now. idea what happened to any of the containers? Oh, like a, a bucket? Yeah. Th there might be some upstairs. Okay, because that would be something portable and easy to incorporate in the new structure. Right. There might be some upstairs. What was this little room used for? Uh, kind of a break room for the coal crew. Okay. They would... Uh, they could always, you know, see a train or a truck. Eventually, at the end of this plant's time, trucks would deliver the coal up here instead of uh, rail cars. And if you can see the metal plating out there, Lynn, yeah, that's the old coal bunker. Okay, so they would just dump a it big grate grating area there. The the dump trucks would come up and just dump it in there. And before that. Why the rail cars, they'd have to come up here and the rail run right out here. They would open up the doors on the bottom of the rail cars and uh, if there wasn't too much snow, it would fall right out right. into that hopper system. Do you remember the rail cars? Yes. Okay. And, and so where did the track go? The track basically ended here and it wound through campus. Um, from here it went through, oh, Pierce Conservatory used to be right where the psychology building is now. Uh -huh. And it would run straight west there and make a, 
a 90 degree curve to the south and it would go between mass science it would go on the west side of mass science um, where Bering Hall is now Matthew Hall and cross State Street right there no kidding. Yeah. So were the, did they usually restrict uh, the rail cars to moving at night, or were these things you'd see during the day? These were things you would see during the day, in, in my memory. Yeah. Okay. And then the crane and the coal cars would come all in the same little package, so that, and there were no, to my knowledge, railroad warning signals that crossed State Street north and south. It's just that when you saw the black and gold crane and the and the coal car coming, you're supposed to stop and let them go through. <laughs> so the train or the crane that you spoke of earlier that would um, pick up the ashes that was in yes. a rail car too. Yes, and and eventually, when they didn't use rail cars anymore, they left the crane here. Okay. Uh, so crazy. Yeah, that. it was quite an operation in its day. So we'll show you the coal bunker upstairs. It's a good thing we decided to keep the steam one since the other two <laughs> we didn't realize at the time. <laughs> the of that coal elevator. As you can see, it goes straight up, goes through the ceiling, and that big long silver oh, yeah. container, that's the coal bunker. Okay. And what are the black things coming off the bottom? Okay. Those were from the old um, they would open the chute, um, this way layer, they called it a way layer. It had a scale on it and another coal hopper. Well, the coal hopper's still up there. Right. You could go along and uh, the guy would uh, come to each um, one of those doors, like the ash hopper door. Uh -huh. He'd come along there and say, well, I know I've got so much coal in this side of the bunker. So he would let, he'd, he'd uh, pull down on um, one of those levers and let X amount of coal come through, usually a ton. And he could see it fall down and being measured on a regular old scale. Uh -huh. He'd let a ton in there at a time, and then he'd push a button and move this thing along, and then open the door on this chute, and I know sometimes he used to have to bang on the thing to get all the coal out, so that... And then it would come right down into the... Into the hopper, the feed hopper in front of the boiler. And if you can notice, see the, the mirror? Mirrors. We saw those, yes. And, the, and the, this, this operator here could see how much coal was inside that hopper so then he could strategically move it along and get that hopper full. So that's how he did it. It was not an automatic process back then, but... It's incredible. And then it would come down and this is how it would be broken up? Well, not, well not exactly broken up, but yes, it would fall in through this hopper and I see a red tag there. Yes, the scale. Generally, that was used for, it's on six right now. Uh -huh. uh, that was to tell the boiler operator he had about a six inch bed of coal going in. Inside this. In, going on in this grate, uh -huh. grate system there would rotate this way and it would pull 
the coal in from the from the feed hopper to the inside to the inside would give the fireman an idea of how the the fire was burning so you can see right in there now is just a bunch of junk right. trash and ashes well he could look in there and see the fire so that's what these inspection doors are for that's and what they're for do the whole thing so you could see and once the coal was inside did it move through or yes it just that great system would pull the coal through at, a, at just the right speed according to however fast the fireman wanted to do it you know right. if it's really cold outside then we really need to get a bunch of coal moving through there pretty fast for more steam right and then the ones higher up do the same thing the larger doors Yes, they're inspection doors. Okay. And as you can see, there's a landing where the guy, the fireman could go up here and he could look in that door and, and uh, see how the fire was going, whether it was burning right or not, or he liked it or not. Yep. And so all of the smoke from the coal from this would go? It would be funneled through a, uh, a we're not, I don't think we'd better go upstairs. Um, for safety reasons. Did, the last time. Did you? I used to be an archaeologist. Okay. But it's up to you, whatever you feel comfortable um, with. Well, if you did the last time, I guess it's okay. But it all goes. There was a metal system at the top of the boilers that would, you know, like a, a an old stove pipe, basically, but a big one. Uh -huh. and would funnel it to the center of the building where the smokestack was and it all funneled out okay. through the smokestack. Um, we have some things flagged down here. Okay. Can you, since we're right here. All right. And this is around the smokestack, correct? These doors are inside. No, it's right there. Smokestack Sorry. Smokestack right here. Okay, so what was behind these? These are boilers also. Okay. But this one was a little different type of a boiler. That one had an automatic grate feeding it. Uh -huh. This one had a great big hopper on top of this one and a single hopper on top of that one. And these were fed by, these were electric. They would, uh, these pistons here would take and push coal in there because the weight, the weight of the coal sitting in that hopper down there, uh -huh. same principle here. Um, okay, here. There you go. There's some coal and there's a piston. Okay. And those pistons would just push the coal in there. So how did the coal get in there? Did someone manually or yes. did it come? Yes, just like that guy there, he would come along here there's your broken mirrors. Right, right. <laughs> there was a, a single hopper here, a single hopper here. He would come along with that way layer and probably put a ton in each one of these. And then the electric motor would shove them in there. So these used to have containers? Yes. They, okay. took, they obviously took those out, didn't okay. they? And would this they were be newer? They, they were just like this one next to us. Okay. See those hoppers right. there? And those had the piston piston pushers in there too. And since these are electric, does that mean this is a newer or? That I can't tell you, okay. but I would assume since they were electric, the answer is yes. Okay, because yeah. that seems like it's fairly low. Yeah, but that one was run by hydraulics now that I see the, okay. see this yeah. tank. I believe that had hydraulic fluid in it and the motors drove the hydraulic fluid and turned that grate on number one. The motors from below with the steam? No, no. The, the hydraulics from this, okay. oh, uh, this okay. uh, pump here. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, see? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that turned the grate. 
The pumps downstairs were for the boiler feed water. Okay, so just the water system. That was just for the water system that made sure the boilers didn't run dry. But uh, come to think of it now, I this one's probably more modern than, than those simply because of the hydraulics. Okay. But this this was the main workhorse of the old power plant, boiler number one. Okay. Yeah, that's the workhorse. Were there ever problems in the extreme cold with maintaining a proper water supply? That would be a question more for Joe. Okay. Because he did like work here in, in there. Right, you have yeah. to have the water or it will Yeah, you crack you got to have water in it or it that's not good if you don't right <laughs> major major problems can you tell me what these scales well that was something that uh, the power plant firemen or operators used um, I can see that one says over fire that one says under fire fan pressure second pass and first pass so, you know, I was, I never was employed as a fireman or an ash guy over here, but I do know that the operators looked at those to make adjustments with, you know, how f fast the coal was being taken in. Right. And if they had, okay, pressure, that's a pressure gauge. I think they always wanted to. Uh, Oh, 125 on you know right leaving the building 125 pounds okay and who would have occupied this space that was um, mainly a telephone it was simply in there a telephone and a desk um, if the guy here ran into trouble he could call the operator down at Wade and say, look, I'm losing steam up here. You guys need to pick up with your boilers down there because I'm having problems. Right. Um, and I think there was also the phone could be used for whatever, outside calls. Right. Yeah. These two uh, ginormous tanks, yeah. what was their purpose? I'm thinking that's where the boiler feed water was stored until it was pumped or kneaded into the the, the boiler drum itself, the okay. steam drum, what they call. Okay. Um, not positive, but that's what I think they are. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, there's something with the red yes. tape, but you know what? I don't know what that is. Okay, it was a little in portable. Yeah. So <laughs> the architects uh, were very concerned about keeping things reasonable with uh, the extraction and incorporation into a new building. So they yeah. were emphasizing things that yeah. wouldn't take up a whole lot of space and uh, that I just, seemed to fit the bill. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, I think maybe there's something else tagged down here, but oh, do you know what this is? Nope. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, something to do with the operation. It was, if it wasn't here, it wasn't needed. So they needed it for something. Right. Yeah. Oh, do you know what these, um, because we have one of them flagged at the other end, these uh, right here, what these were for? Well, you know, Lynn, I think those are what they call... Yes, because they go on into the interior of the boiler. Those are what they call the tubes, the boiler tubes. Okay. That, uh, and what would they have been used for? Uh, well, they would transfer the heat from the coal, and, you know, water was originally inside there, so eventually that turned into steam, and that would go, it looks like, to the top of the boiler where the steam drum was and that's how they made their steam. It's, right. uh, the, the tubes in a boiler are essential. If you have a leak in one of them, not good. Okay. 
um, they need to be shut down the boiler needs to be shut down and and uh, the tubes need to be repaired yeah and then the other power plant would take over or the other hoppers here would right work. well I never saw any boiler in here operated but number one seven and eight and they would never run seven and eight unless it got really really cold and I mean cold I never saw three four five and six run okay never did and the, the little holes or the little um, doors up above those are the same I like the observation things except there's no walkway to I, those. right I'd say they're they're an inspection portal of some kind but I never saw anyone use them I only saw the firemen use the small ones on the sides of the boiler okay because I don't know one night the fire went out on number one and the guy says go get some dirty old oily rags from the basement and bring them up here so I brought him up here and he was uh, poking them through the inspection doors and then he'd, he'd throw a match in there and get a fire going with some coal that was already on that grate bed. Okay. So um, that's how you would get the fire started like you would, you know, in the old days you'd take out the trash and burn for mom and dad in your old trash barrel. Right. Or I did. Uh, that's how you did it. Right. Just throw a match and <laughs> Hope exactly. it takes off, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you mind if we go upstairs because there are a couple doors? No, I guess um, not. Uh, there's a, let's see. There's a stairway here. Okay. How many people do you think, approximately, I know it's a hard question, but how many people worked here at, like on a given shift? Well, oh, on a shift? Yeah. Because it was a 24-7 operation. Well, you would have, during the day, the, the superintendent or the uh, manager was here from uh, 7.30 to 4, and he always had an ash man and a fireman. So I would say it, it would run on two people. No kidding. Yeah, an ash man and a fire guy, fireman. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. And how often would the coal have to be put in the hoppers? That would depend on the, on the weather. On the weather. Yeah. Um, when Wade came online back in the very early 60s, or it might have been 1960, this place started to uh, slow down so we don't exactly need everything you've got up here anymore type of a situation right. but I was always told they kept this one online to help push the steam that was made south push it on up help to push it on up to the north end of the northern parts campus right. you know places like Mackey Arena uh, came online I believe in 67 so they needed this place until I'd say the late 80s was when the last fire was was here 88 or 89 okay. and they shut the boilers down yeah so you want to yes. go on up yes okay. thank you door. Did you want to look in? Well, I see a red tag on something back there. Yes, this handle. You know what? I don't know what that okay. is for. It had a lot of the markings from the uh, manufacturer with Purdue that it was slated to go oh. here was one of the reasons that we decided to okay. flag it. Oh, does, what can we read upon this? Combustion Engineering Company, care of Purdue, heating and power plant, West Lafayette. can't tell you what exactly it was or was used for. Okay. No. On up.
So this was very warm in the winter when it was going, yeah. I imagine. And it these was... pipes were not uninsulated like they are now. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've... Uh, and these doors would be the same, the yeah. inspection? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the fireman could open that up if he wanted to and see how the fire was going this high up. And um, would they have ever opened them to keep the fire going if it was going out? Do you know what I mean? To feed air? I doubt it. Okay. I, I think most of the lower doors were essential to the under fire and over fire things that we saw on that little control panel down there. Right. Okay. I, I don't think they were. So, I, now we're at the top of the boiler here where the steam drones are. Yeah. But don't fall. I won't. Yeah, because they Three the steam drones. I thought the metallic paint on the brick is crazy because it makes everything seem like it's metal. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> and there's part of the um, the flu system. See how they kind of point that way towards yes. the stack. So everything was channeled. There's your tubes. Yeah. Huh. And what are those? Those are the tubes. That take the steam up. Yeah. That, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Oops. Boiler tubes. Thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. Oh, and here's here's some steam drums with the inspection plates out of them. My goodness. Yeah, see see how oh, the tubes, yeah. the ends of the tubes come up in this yes. one? Oops. It's amazing how. Yeah. So I've never seen one open until today. And this is just a light well? Up above? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that hole there, what would that be for? Good question. I can tell that it's covered with sheet metal on the other side. Don't I don't know. Okay. See there's another one over there. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, real power plant guy I should come with you to no. answer all of your questions. You are a real power plant guy. <laughs> you should have been here the first time around because we were trying to figure out. Okay, now See that yes. bank a bank of floodlights? Yes. Those were to light up the old smokestack. Okay. When the smokestack was here, there they didn't have the red flashing lights or the oh. strobe lights for those. So they would take this this series of uh, flood lamps and they would light it automatically every night so that you know Airplane aircraft right. could huh. see it. And here's the smokestack. Yes, and we have uh, one of the doors. Maybe it's on the other side of the smokestack, actually. But there was a door with a lot of writing uh, that was specific okay. that we... So this is just the other side of what we saw before. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I wondered about this um, metal bracket that's here, what would the purpose of this have been on the smokestack? Just to keep everything? Uh, reinforcement. Right. For the blocks, for the bricks. 
That's that's my yeah yeah. And here's the top of those big storage tanks you were asking me about mm -hmm. for the boiler feed water. I believe that's what those were that stored it. And when the boiler sensed, you know, I need more water, there, there would be an automatic valve that would come open and let water into the steam drums. Okay. And what is this, the back of? What are we looking at? Oh, this is the coal bunker. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. All and right. Joe and I would get out. Okay. See that catwalk? Yes. Right there? <laughs> yes. Well, when the way layer would come along, we could put stick our one leg out there and one leg on the catwalk and take a sledgehammer mm. and beat up towards where that chute opens yeah. on the bottom of this and hopefully the coal would come out. Okay. So on the little elevators it goes all the way up and would come into this mm -hmm. and then be redistributed down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. My goodness. Yep. How did you feel when you had to be with the sledgehammer hat on the catwalk? Well you know what back then in the mid 70s i was fairly young and adventurous it didn't bother me but it would now <laughs> <laughs> that was 40 years ago <laughs> close to 40 years ago there's a door yeah huh. is that what you wanted to know um the no I, I think it's on the other side i thought it oh. sorry okay maybe it's on the other side of this so i saw a bmw I do know the orange paint means there, that's asbestos and it needs to come off. Okay. You mean the covering was that that was the insulation, right? Yeah. For the pipes. Yeah. See, you can get an idea. That's been sprayed and locked down because I see the blue uh, lockdown agent, but that's asbestos. Okay. And so, would that same compound have been over all of the pipes, or would something else have been there to insulate it? Yes, they have removed. They've gone through over the years. Little by little, the asbestos abatement crew would come and just remove some at their, you know, when maybe their workload was a little slow. Right. They would come in and and uh, remove bit by bit. There's still a lot to be done. Yeah, that's part of the reason yeah. that the demolition will take so long. So that wasn't the writing you were LD or whatever? No. Or is it on the other side? It of might this? be on the other side of this. There was a little metal door, and you had to go back. No, because I think we're too far. Too far. We must have passed it. What would something like this have been used for? Well, that looks like a damper. Close. Yeah. If you close that off, that would choke the fire. Okay? okay. To me, that was an emergency. I need to shut this. You know, quit feeding the coal. Let's pull the damper shut. Choke the fire. Right. That's what I think it is. Okay. Cause see, yeah. Oh yeah. Huh. Well, you want to go back and see if we. Do can... You know what? Perhaps it's the next level down. It was in the middle. So I'm wondering if it's on the next level down. What well, could be? We could do that. Do you mind? No. Thank you very much. This has been incredibly informative. You want me to go down first? Do you mind? No. Sorry. <laughs> I used to be better. I too have gotten old. So that way you can, if you fall, you can fall on me. I'll try not to take us both out.
They're trying to incorporate some of the grate because in the smaller edition on the front, there's a lot of the same grating only in bigger pieces. Uh -huh. So they were thinking maybe because it's the same all over that they would use it in some capacity in the new building, which I thought was kind of cool. Okay, sure. I see some red tape. Yeah, here. do we know what this pipe? Well, this, this comes from... Uh, I can tell you that if you look where some of the piping originates, it goes back this way right. to the boilers. And it, it came to this area here, would come into this, what I would call a manifold, and it would take, see that pipe would go downstairs, it would go on into the tunnel, and that was your, the steam that this plant made was part of this header system would collect it in, in all the piping, see all the pipe, uh -huh. and take it and put it out into the tunnel, into the into the tunnel system. No kidding. That's what it is. And so you work in the tunnels now, still? Yeah. <laughs> Two more years. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm planning to retire in two years. Do you have any fun retirement plans? Play more golf. Sounds like a good I'll plan. have more time. Not around here. Oh, it's, it's right back there. Sorry. And Going right. up the other staircase threw me off. Okay. So we go this way? Yes. And then it's right there. More. This door, when you, it, you can close it. Okay. We were going to try to keep this whole thing. That's inside. Yeah, the smoke that is the smoke stack. Okay, so we have chimney erected by HR Heineke. Heineke Incorporated, New York City. So we thought maybe this was original with the snow set. Oh, yeah. Since it's, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, and this would be something easy to incorporate in the new structure. Okay. That'd be great. And That's why, a great idea. why uh, would you need to look inside the smoke snack just to check That's it out? Good old power plant question. Okay, <laughs> I all don't right. know why. No, that's cool. Yeah. No, because there you have the bricks that are just like the ones downstairs. My goodness. And look, you, there are things to climb up on the other side uh, yep, on the from inside. maintenance would they have had to clean this at some point or is it just something that um, burns itself you off? Know, at, one, at one time I think there was a uh, system in inside this part of the, the smokestack that they collected what they call fly ash okay that's really really fine ash that would I think come up with your smoke and the stuff and it would filter and fall back down in through the chimney area and there was a a, uh, a hopper type thing that the guy could pull that ash cart through right here in the middle and just open that hopper and he could also get rid of the fly ash from the smokestack again that's theory on my part that's yeah. good enough yeah good enough so this might have allowed access then, although um, you have the yeah, down below as well. Yeah, because I uh, I don't see that, and I, I notice a discoloration of the bricks mm -hmm. from that point on up. So I'm thinking that's that. This is about the area where they may have uh, saved that fly ash or given it a, an opportunity to fall down in here and be collected by a, a hopper type chute that we've seen before some of those shoots right shoots right. and hoppers and things it's fascinating i would probably you know if if the guy that <clears throat> actually runs the power plant at wade uh would would uh edit this he'd probably say hey marty did a pretty decent job <laughs> <laughs> no for, you for not being a power plant employee well i thank you very <clears throat> much because yeah. as we were wandering through the last time there were lots of questions and you know um now there's a, another side to the power plant did you want to go over in there? the small the tiny yes yeah yes okay. please 
Um, All right. If you have time. Yeah. Again, thank you very much. This has been very informative. Well, for someone that, or anyone that doesn't have any clue as to, you know, what went on in here, I would find it, you know, interesting also. Now, we're hoping to be able to keep some of the large pipes right here. Oh, like some of this? Uh, yeah. I don't see why not. Just put in the contract to have them cut out. That's what all the red, they're supposed to be uh, taking things. I remember at one time, Lynn, I was working here um, poking the coal out from that coal bunker. Uh-huh. Uh, my mom used to pack me ham and cheese sandwiches wrapped in tin foil. I'd lay them here 10, 15 minutes. They'd be ready at lunch at 12 noon. No kidding. Hot sandwich. That was our microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the 70s. <laughs> Hot ham and cheese. Hot ham and cheese wrapped up in aluminum foil. Probably more delicious than the microwave. Yeah, I'd say it was <laughs> from what I remember. Well, they don't want us going in there. That's the old shower room and restroom area. Well, that's good. And what was this space used for? Um. I believe this is where the the chillers used to be. What they call chillers, they would uh, take and convert steam, and uh, they would make chilled water somehow through the process. An engineer could probably tell you more how that was done, but uh, I was looking at an old picture. See that round cover right, right there. Yes. And then there's another one. Yeah. If you if you see right over here, there's another hole. Yeah. I I saw pictures of the chillers sitting here, all spanking new, and there was pipes going from them out through those holes. So they made chilled water for air conditioning. Right. And and there was one here and one over here. Those two by four thought. Okay. So somehow they took steam and made chilled water, and they called them chiller absorber units, I believe. Okay, and they would be over where the open holes are now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then this crane system right. would be used for, well, he could, the crane operator should climb up that ladder and get on right there. If there was a big piece of machinery, a big motor or whatever on those absorber chiller units, why well, he could, you know, go down there, take it in from the big garage door to the south, pull it up here, or or even he could pull it up through here probably okay. at one point, depending upon whatever needed to be worked on up here. Okay. And these things are left over, those are from the the ash hoppers? Close. Remember the uh, the grate? The yeah. grate system that was on that hydraulic on boiler number one? Right. That's Those are pieces of the grating. Okay. And so then they would wear out and need to be replaced? Yeah. 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 Because there are trash cans full of them. Yep. And I was looking for one of those coal conveyor buckets. And Would those have been repurposed someplace else, or? Mm, they probably just threw them away, okay. junked them, because there was a backup elevator system that was on the outside of the building where we came in, uh -huh. and they tore it out real quick. Okay. It was a backup system, but it had coal conveyor buckets and the whole system too. Yep. Those might be momentous. Momentous. That's what we thought. 
you know, along, along with the bricks. Um, yeah. Of course, it's Purdue property, so it's not up to me to give them away. So. It's a good suggestion, though. It is. They'll say, what is this? <laughs> well, it's a great part of the grade on the old boiler system at the power plant. Huh? You know? <laughs> what old power plant? Oh, the one they... They decommissioned in 1988. Well, I wasn't here. I wasn't born in 88, a lot of people would say. Yeah. This seems really new. The caterpillar thing, and it has some of the filters seem really new. We were looking at that. That was a backup electrical system. Like a generator? Yeah. No kidding, because this, I mean, this seems, well, 96, it seems new. Yeah, see, here's the, uh, the generator part of it. Yeah. So, whenever, and if they ever Purdue lost power, why, they'd start that up and make sure at least the plant had electricity to run the hydraulic system that would run the, the grade on boiler number one, for instance, okay. and the lights, obviously. Right. And everything is on a concrete platform, even the steam thing over there, just to keep it off the ground, or? You mean like the boilers? Um, the little steam and electric for the water. Oh, yeah. But everything is on a concrete platform. Uh, basically, a lot of that goes with, uh, uh, if you can notice here, see these little pads here, Lynn? Yes. For anti-vibration. Okay. purposes and I don't know if those other had that or not those um, earlier units we looked at and this downstairs would have just been to maintain the chillers above to run them well okay here's here's your pedestal oh, for yeah. that I think originally probably a smaller chiller set there Of course, we all know what's there now. There's another generator unit right down there, Lynn. See it? Right, that's much older. Mm -hmm. And those doors? They go out the south end of the building by the, uh, well, there used to be a great big high voltage transformer type station out the door and to the left. And uh, again, this is where parts and pieces could enter the power plant the crane operator could come by and navigate that hook out there and pull up anything he needed to this level yeah must have been amazing to see massive things with the crane that's huge yeah it's wrote somewhere on that crane what capacity might be on the other side but those are huge high beams. I guess it's uh, three tons capacity. Of course, that you know that's not real thick cable, so it's probably about right. Don't stand underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I wouldn't <laughs> hang anything off of it, though. Coal conveyor buckets, Lynn. Lynn, excuse me. No, I keep fine. keep looking at that email. It says Lynn. My grandma calls me Leonard, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not awful that bad, was I? Okay. Uh, I still don't see the name of the conveyor bucket. There might be something downstairs on That's, this. We did not go down here. 
Okay, let's go. Birds. Yeah. Just the other side of the main level that we came in. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're just up a couple of steps. More high voltage stuff. More high voltage stuff. Don't go in there. Lots of gears. valves. <clears throat> Still don't see what we're looking for. Another fly ash okay. thing, uh, hopper, where some of the fly ash, really small ashes, would come off the front end of that grate, uh -huh. and then they would find them. Okay, here, here's a good, here's fly ash right here. Oh, yeah. Really fine, sifty stuff. That's more cold, but. It is fly ash mixed in. You see how right. fine it was. Okay. And there's the bricks. More bricks. Tell everybody about. Yes. And let's go on. Well, wait a minute. Can you tip over that pipe? Yeah. There's some graffiti up above that I wanted to ask you about, but oh. we noticed that it was decorated. Just kind of cool. Up above? Well, no, this right here, but just the side that they put a P on the side of it. Oh. School spirit. Well, Purdue's never won one of those, so. <laughs> well, the men haven't, so I don't know. <laughs> Right. Must have been a decent. The women did. I yeah, the women that. did in '99. Oh, there's a good scrapyard. If we're gonna find one of those, what do you think they did with the rest of the carts? There was only one. Oh, there was only the one only ash one cart. ash cart. No okay. kidding. To my knowledge. So that was a busy little cart. Very, very busy.
here's some more Ooh, asbestos yeah. is going to have to be removed. And so that's what pipes, the other pipes sort of look like? <clears throat> pipes are going to have to be disconnected from the tunnel. That'll be part of the summer project. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. How many, uh, they'll just disconnect them and cap them? Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to shut the steam off on the, obviously on the tunnel end so they can put weld on their cap, cut these loose, put caps on. How much of a disturbance will that cause with everything? Nothing. No. Especially during the summer. You know, less steam need. Right. Well, man, darn it, we're not going to find it. Great. Well, until darn until you, I didn't even realize that we had coal containers that we should be looking for. So oh, okay. that the information is good either way. Okay. Yes, do you know what this is? Because it looks like it's maybe an accordion thing that expands. You're right. It was a, uh, it is a steam line expansion joint. They called those the, well, I called them an accordion, but it was a bellows, what they call a bellows expansion joint. Okay. Um, kind of experimentary, ex however you want to say that, about 20 years ago. We put it in somewhere and it didn't expand at all, so we had to cut it back out. Is the idea like to help regulate pressure or? To allow for movement of the lines. Okay. Expansion joints, uh, they're throughout the tunnel system to allow for the varying temperature of the steam because sometimes it's 550 degrees and sometimes it's only 230. So it has to be allowed to move. Right. And do the ones that you have work? Yes, they do. <laughs> they do now. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. And they're not those. <laughs> 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 they, I see they've moved all of them out, or I could show you a, an expansion joint, but we've got all of our stuff moved out that we needed to save before... Uh, Demo. Yeah. Well, Lynn, there's not much else. Well, thank you very much. Definitely. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. It was very informative, for sure. Thank you. It's the end of an era. How many, do you know of any other people who worked here? Well, that are still living? Yes. Um, Joe Arnett is one. Bruce High, who's, I think he's the power plant manager at Wade, he may have been here a little while. Okay. And all the rest of the other employees, you know, either quit, got fired, or passed away. Right. That I ever knew. Okay. So I don't know of anyone else but Joe. Someone before said something about classes maybe being in here, and I don't know if it was in the capacity of coming through, like the engineers looking at things. Yeah. Um, do you know anything about that? Well, again, I was assigned to meet someone here from a mechanical engineering class, I think, and they had um, three or four students come up with someone who had a, I'm going to call it a, what civil engineers use, a surveying looking. Like a total station. Okay, that works. And I took them upstairs to the west side where we were, uh -huh. and they took pictures. It would take panoramic pictures, 
and we were up there about an hour or so and they needed to do it for some reason some engineering class okay. so I know that there I took one uh, a tour class up there a month or so ago oh so recently yeah okay yeah. someone uh, had said something to Dean Mullins about being here back in the day and having classes here but that's all the information we had so we didn't really know what that would entail I don't either okay But the, um, I don't know if you want to hear this buzzer, it still works. Uh, when there was a problem with something down here, the fireman could go and hit this button. And that would alert whoever else was in the building, I need you here now. We okay. have a problem. Like one of the boiler feed pumps went down, so we need to work on it now. That was kind of an alarm okay. that you could hear throughout the building. I can imagine. Well, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Anything okay. else? I don't think so, but if I need to get in touch with you, is mm -hmm. that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Sure can. And your information? Okay. I have a card. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, Lynn. And where are you usually located? Oh, Stuart. Stuart B50. All right. Well, thank you You're very welcome. much. I Good. really appreciate it. Good. I'm glad you found it interesting. Yeah. Lots of questions yeah. answered, so thank you. Okay. Thank you.